We are live, we are live. Okay, awesome. Fix this. Hello, Facebook world. Hi, Pat. Nice to see you over here on Zoom. Okay, we are officially live. Um, I want to introduce to you, let me change this so you can see, see if that changes how it shows up. Let me see if it changes how it shows up over here, Andy. Okay, sounds good. Hi, Deirdre. I know you're super excited about this one. Awesome. Okay, great. I want to introduce you guys to Andy. Andy is a dear friend of mine that I have known, which is crazy, going on, um, God, six years, Andy. So nuts. But wow. um, Andy's originally from San Diego. In 2015, he relocated to New Zealand to study the, at the College of Natural Health and Homeopathy. He has always had uh, been passionate about the well-being of animals and felt there was a direct need to serve the community with the power of natural techniques. After graduating in 2018 with a diploma in homeopathy in animal health, Andy has started up his own practice in which he can follow his own passion. He feels that there are no greater rewards in life than to be given the opportunity to help support the health of an individual. So not only are you passionate about natural health for us humans, but you have this extra knowledge and passion for the, the animals, which is cool because I get all the questions about animals. And I always say, I don't own any and I don't know, but I can find out. So you're my find out. You're my, my, uh, my expert here. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me, Jen. It's an honor. And yes, I really appreciate, appreciate that introduction. You're exactly right. You know, I get to follow my passion by using these natural techniques. And I'm a bit of a self-taught essentialist when it comes to essential oils. Um, that's how the journey started. And we'll get there here shortly uh, once I share my story on how I discovered essential oils for my animals. Um, but yeah, so now I run a, a clinic basically out of my house uh, where I'm able to work with clients all over the world via Zoom and be able to help them when the when the situation gets too big, so to speak, um, you know, when times when you feel like you're dealing with your, your situation with your animal health wise, and it's just getting, you know, a bit overwhelming for you, you've done the basics. I'm going to teach you some of the basics today. So you can start to use these with first aid and health management and whatnot, have a more proactive approach. But I also want you to feel um, empowered with the, with these techniques, but don't get overwhelmed with it. You know, if you need me to come in and help you out, then I'm here to do so as well. So that being said, I'm going to share these slides here. So just give me a minute to bring these up and then we'll go ahead and jumpstart the call. Cool. I know um, just before you even dive in, I know we have some questions about birds, Andy. So I'm going to give you that. So I know that there'll be a question about that. And then I think everybody else is just in general excited to, to hear the thing. So I'm going to mute myself and let you take it away. Awesome. Just bear with me. It's probably going to break up just slightly as we load. All right, Jen, before you mute yourself, can you see my screen? Um, yes, I can see your screen. It is loading over on um, Facebook land. Give it just a second. Yeah, it's on Missy and a white puppy in a wedding. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> a very big puppy. So hopefully we're all loaded up and yeah. you just want to welcome everybody once again to the call. So let me just share my story on how um, my holistic approach came about with um, using more of a natural tech, you know, these natural techniques for my animals. This photo here with my big puppy, she's, this is my three-year-old, this was my three-year-old American Bulldog pup. Um, this is a picture from our wedding in November 14th, 2009. And she was the flower girl in our wedding. It was a very special day, of course, being our wedding. And, and we were, it was a very memorable uh, time and, and glad that she was able to celebrate this time with us. She had a little tutu. She walked down the aisle. She sat with the bridesmaids. And during the entire ceremony, she army crawled 
up closer and closer to my wife. It was it was a, a funny scene and, and we were glad to have her there. She was like our child. We didn't have any kids back then. Um, this was our baby and we absolutely adored her. Well, roughly 20, uh, 35, 40 days later, Christmas 2009, Christmas morning, we woke up to celebrate the day and we noticed that Moral, which was her name, we noticed that Moral had a bit of a cough. And, you know, didn't think much of it, but the, the cough progressed and it got worse throughout the day. And during that afternoon, it just didn't really sound right. And it was too consistent. It was deep. It was wet. Um, so we said, you know what, even though it's Christmas Day, we need to get take her in to get checked out. And we just had a bad feeling about the situation. So we brought her into the emergency center there in Orange County, California, where we were living at the time. And they got an x-ray on her lungs to see what was going on. It came back and said, unfortunate news, but Moral has an enlarged heart and she has less than six months to live. And we were absolutely devastated, just completely crushed. Here she was, our flower girl, you know, the month before in our wedding. And now we're being told she has less than six months to live. So we didn't want to accept that answer and we wanted to do whatever possible to be able to prolong her life. And so we said, what else can we do, doc? And they said, well, first off, you could send her to this heart specialist. So we did that. We sent her to the heart specialist. Um, they said, there's not much we could do. We got to keep her on diuretics to keep her lungs from basically filling up with fluid because of her enlarged heart. There was just way too much blood and stuff going on, pumping irregularly. And so from there, we, he said, there's, this is probably about all you can do is just keep her lungs dry and just let her live her life. So we were happy with that answer. So then we went to a holistic vet, which was, you know, a town over from us to find out if he had any techniques. Now, this is the first time I had any experience with going to somebody holistic, right? I don't even know if I knew what the word actually meant, um, but it sounded like it meant something natural, right? Um, so we said, okay, let's try out this guy. And basically similar, you know, information. He said, there's not much we can do, but he did give me a recommendation to change her diet, go something a little bit more natural, you know, get her off the kibble and see if maybe that can assist with the issue, get her on some nice natural supplements as well. And, but she's going to have to stay on this diuretic. Well, unfortunately, Moral passed away January, 2010. So basically only had, we only had about an extra month with her. And we were crushed. But what it did is it ultimately opened up our mindset to more thinking more holistically, more naturally. What else can we do? We didn't want to repeat the situation. Was there anything that we could do in the beginning? You know, you start, all this stuff starts going through your mind. Well, maybe we should be caring for our, our animals a bit more naturally. So it kind of opened up the door to a new way of thinking. And it was a very empowering moment for us, even though it was a sad moment. So you know, fast forward 2012, at this time we had another, we were a big time dog lover. So we had three more dogs um, and we just relocated to another home in Orange County. And my, and we just got started with doTERRA as well. You know, we were, we were absolutely in love with the products. We had plenty of success with them. We were caring for our families naturally, but my dogs all of a sudden, uh, exploded with fleas. It was a massive infestation and they were indoor outdoor dogs. So they brought them into the house. The house was covered in fleas. They had a two-year-old daughter. She was getting bit by the fleas. Uh, it was, it was, you know, just really rough times. And so we said, okay, we know we, we got to do something about these fleas. This is out of control. And my wife, you know, made the recommendation, why don't you look into these essential oils? And literally, we just started using this, like for maybe like two months, we had the oils in our home. And I said, well, why not? You know, why don't, why don't we give it a shot? Let me do some research. So I looked up how to use essential oils for fleas. And I was astonished on how many oils you could use. So I said, you know what? It's best that I just start with the top of the list and the number one recommendation here. And then, you know, see how we go from there. And almost instantly, we had tremendous success with this flea protocol. And it was easy to see that this flea protocol was working. I'll give you the flea protocol down the road in the presentation here, but I'm just trying to paint the picture here. So it was easy to see how this flea protocol was working because 
one of my dogs would break out in big welts every time he got bit by the fleas. He was highly allergic to the saliva in the, from the flea, which would make him break out in welts. And he would turn around and he'd start to bite these welts. The welts would break open. It was an absolutely bloody mess. Once I started using the essential oils, I didn't see the welts anymore. So he was, you know, um, you, you, he was a, a way to gauge on how things were going with the pack. Because if he was breaking out in welts, then I knew that the fleas were on the dogs. Okay, so it was a simple indicator for me. Now, this is very important information when we need to really learn the mannerisms and the body language and what's going on with our animals. We need to pay close attention to details. And this is going to be really helpful um, with using these essential oils. So that's how I got here. So what I did from there is basically started to teach my, I got excited about it. What else can we do? I started to teach the community about how to use the essential oils. And then people started to come to me left and right, you know, about their, their pets. So when I had the opportunity to up level my skills in 2015 and go back to school and become an animal health practitioner, I was all over it. And so now here we are today. Um, and while I'm, that's why I say I'm self-taught in the essential oils, but ultimately I went back to school to get all that science and everything else to back myself um, up in, in the techniques that we use. So let's discuss essential oils. What is an essential oil? People get really misconstrued. And many people think, oh, we're talking about perfumes or we're talking about incense you know, and we're, you know, not many people understand the true definition of essential oil, right? This is a natural element that the plant produces to protect itself in its environment. So it's a built-in natural protection mechanism that the plant provides to allow it. It's somewhat of an immune system, you know, kind of, I like to refer to it as an immune system for the plant itself. It helps the plant survive and thrive in its environment. It protects the plant from virus, from bacteria, from different types of fungus, from pests, from different predators. That's why there's, there's a strong aroma with the essential oils to try and ward off and detour predators. Okay, so this is a survival a technique that the plant has done um, for, you know, I don't know, millions of years, let's say, who knows. But anyways, we've started using essential oils thousands of years ago, we discovered this. So this is nothing new, but we've never had essential oils as pure as we have today. So basically what we do is we extract the essential oil from the plant itself. Now we're finding these essential oils in different seeds, bark, stems, roots, uh, different parts of the, of the plant itself. Now these can be highly concentrated. So the golden rule with these essential oils, using them with animals is that less is more. We need to use very small amounts um, when we're using essential oils with our animals because they're a bit more sensitive than even we are, right? These can be 50 to 70 times more powerful than your herbs. So why doTERRA? For me as an animal health practitioner, I need to know that I am providing the best of the best information to my clients. So it's even um, more important that I know I'm using an, a product that is safe with my clients. And what's different about doTERRA in the industry, they pretty much revolutionized the industry in terms of producing a 100% pure essential oil that can be guaranteed by other outside sources. You just don't find this in the industry. Now, people are trying to catch on. They go, oh, we need to provide this test as well. So ultimately, what doTERRA has created is something called CPTG. Now, that stands for Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade. And ultimately, this is an in-house quality control system that doTERRA has developed. Now, this starts with the sourcing of the plant material. The plant material is sourced all over the world to find the best of invest environments that these plants can ultimately thrive in. Harvesting at the most opportune time, another important step in order to get a high quality essential oil. Each plant needs to be harvested at the most opportune time and it's all gonna be different depending on the type of plant. Now, each batch is rigorously tested by a third party and this is what changed the game. For me as a health practitioner, I know that I can guarantee my clients every time they grab one of these little brown bottles that it is 100% pure essential oil. And it has to be 100% pure essential oil if we're gonna be using this with our animals. So sometimes my clients have their own source of oil. 
and they say, well, can I use this oil here? And I'd simply tell them, can you provide the third party test results to me? They say, well, let me find out. Come back almost every single time and say no, right? This is what makes doTERRA transparent is that these tests are public, right? So I can go find out exactly the compounds and the constituents within this essential oil and the guarantee that it's been tested by somebody else and not just the company itself. So what this testing does is it guarantees there's no, there's no toxins, contaminants, microorganisms, or anything else that shouldn't be in a 100% pure essential oil. If it's 100% pure essential oil, it should be exactly that. So that's why I choose doTERRA within my practice and for my own home as well. So now I want to go over the simple guidelines for you in terms of how we are going to use these essential oils for our pets. I get a lot of questions. Are they safe for animals? How do we use them with our animals? Okay, so we're going to cover a lot of these techniques right now. This is the nuts and bolts of the presentation, the simple guidelines. So first off, I want to start with know the species, the health, the age, and the mannerisms of your animal. Okay, so let's start with the species. Not all essential oils are going to be safe for any type of animal. Okay, there's going to be a certain selection that we can use with some and a different selection we can use with others. Okay, so we'll cover the species here, the general, you know, um, species shortly. We also need to know the health and the age. The health and the age is very important in terms of how we are going to dilute the essential oil. Another golden rule, always dilute. And you're going to hear me say this multiple times throughout this presentation because I want to embed that in the way you practice these essential oils. Also, the, know the mannerisms of your animal. How does your animal communicate with you? And ultimately, this is going to be through body language, right? So we need to get really in tune, like I said in the beginning, of, of the communication of the animal itself. So we're going to cover this right now. So reading the reaction of the oils is very important. I'm going to tell you know a couple of stories along the way so I can paint the picture for you. And from my own personal experience and an experience with my clients. So we want to read the reaction. We want to introduce the essential oil to the animal before we even start, okay? And when we introduce the essential oil, we want to read the reaction. What is the animal doing? Is the animal avoiding you? Is the animal showing excitement around the essential oil? You know, is, is the animal a bit weary of that oil? And how I learned this was self-experience. So when I started that flea protocol back in 2012, I had three dogs at the time, like I said. Well, I had one dog that continued to avoid me every time I brought out this regiment to, to, uh, to apply. And I said, well, something's not right here. But I knew that I had to get this stuff on her because we needed to control the fleas. Same thing next day. She would avoid me, walk across the yard, and go sit in the corner almost. And I said, okay, you know, this is a bit funny. Um, I'm going to do a bit more research around this. And then I realized, I read a, um, an article on how if animals are doing this, it might, they might be indicating to you that the oil is not mixing right with them. So I said, well, why don't I try another oil? There's a whole list of them here. So I tried another oil and I got a completely different reaction. She was more open. She didn't walk away uh, from me into the other side of the yard and hide in the corner. She was, um, you know, so she, she was indicate it was indicating to me that she was okay with this other oil and not the first one that I tried. So we want to read the reactions when we're first introducing the essential oil to the animals. Now we always wanna make this a positive experience. So I like to reward my animals when they get their application with treats and love and attention and affection. Okay, so then they associate all these positive um, uh, actions with the essential oils. I never want to force the essential oil onto the animal because that's going to make the animal scared and weary and unsure of the essential oil in general. So any oil that you bring out, they're going to, to associate that with a negative experience. And then it's just going to be very difficult to use these natural techniques with them. So we always want to make it a positive experience. A technique that I like to do is, let's say we're doing this flea protocol, do this during dinner time or do this during breakfast when they're eating, you know, so they associate the essential oil with food. 
Next, I want to jump to aromatic selection. So this is, you may see this in other textbooks as self-selection. I've always referred to this as aromatic selection. This is actually allowing the animal to choose the oil themselves. So let's say we're dealing with um, a very anxious dog or um, a frightened horse or a horse that's dealing with digestive upsets or a cat that's um, a bit grumpy all the time. Okay. And we're trying to work with the essential oil. So what I like to do is I like to put, you know, select three different essential oils, keep the, the lids on and then introduce those oils to the animal and watch how they engage with each oil. Okay. They're going to come up, they're going to sniff one and then they're going to go to the other. And then they're going to go to the third one. I like to start with three. And then I'm going to read the reaction. How is the animal reacting and responding when they smell the oil? This is going to be a great indicator on which oil is best for them. I was working with the golden retriever one time, and we were trying to manage some anxiousness that this golden retriever had. And so what we did is we invited her into the room with three bottles that were all very calming essential oils. And what she did was she came in the room, she saw the little brown bottles and she, then she went back and she, she took off. She had so much anxiety that even those little brown bottles scared her. So we needed to switch up the technique just slightly, but still allow her to come in, smell the aroma and engage with the oils. So I asked the owner, how is she with socks? Does she have you know any bad habits with socks, tear them up or anything like that? The owner said, no, nah, she's perfectly fine with stuff like that. So I said, let's grab three separate socks. Let's put one drop um, of oil on each separate sock and then invite the dog back into the room. So we invited the dog back into the room. She got a completely, completely different reaction. She was engaging now with the scents on the socks. She went to each sock and smelt it and went from one to another. But one particular sock, she stuck around a little bit longer. She smelt it a second time. She looked up at her owner. She gave a just a slight little tail wag. Boom. That's what you're looking for, okay? A positive reaction to when she smelt the oil. Now you can do this with just about all your animals. We'll talk about birds. I mean, they may not show this particularly, but definitely with your cats and your dogs and your horses and sheep and cattle, you know, all, the, all those mammals, they're very good with their body language and they'll let you know. Andy, I have, a, I have a question that popped up that's very relevant to this. So I wanna ask you while you're on this topic. Uh, yeah. Melissa's asking, I've also seen that if you put it on your hand and put it near them, if they lick their lips instead of avoid, then that's a good sign they're communicating it's okay. Is there any truth to that? Depends on what species we're talking about. It yeah, really depends on the, 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 um, the animal itself specifically. So which type of animal are we talking about? I know she has a dog. Okay. Yeah. So it, it can indicate positive, uh, you know, a positive reaction. Sometimes licking the lips though also indicates stress. Mm. So we can take this two different ways. I know that when we're looking for stress in, in an animal, specifically, I'm looking for, for an animal that licks its lips quite often for no reason. Okay, so you want to that but it could be indicating like you know, it does. So basically, this is what I mean by know your pet. If does this dog do this when she's excited and happy and getting love? Um, or does she do this when she tends to be a bit more stressed out? Okay, so that would be, you know, a, a way to gauge if, if, um, if this is what she's doing, you know, in terms of reading the reaction. Perfect. Thank you. And basically, we just allow the animal to select the essential oil themselves. The good thing about essential oils is that they cross over so well. So there's so many that we can use. Um, and we just say, you know, which one are you going to select today? And sometimes that may change, okay? So just a, a couple, you know, keep continue on with the guidelines here. Always keep this out of the eyes, ears, nose, and other sensitive areas of the animal, okay? We never drop the essential oil inside the eye or, in, or inside the ear as well. Now, let's say you're dealing with some discomfort around the ear for whatever reason, and you're applying the essential oil behind the ear, okay? Never inside, but behind the ear diluted down with the carrier oil. Now, I always recommend to keep the carrier oil next to you, just in case, let's say the dog swings its head into your hand on accident um, and, and bumps your hand, the essential oil gets a little bit into their eye. What you wanna do is you wanna grab 
your fractionated coconut oil or your carrier oil, squirt a bit on your other hand that you didn't use to apply. So always keep one hand free if you can. And then, um, and then you can basically dilute that down, just apply it directly to the eye. That's gonna calm things down. Or if you see a little bit of redness, let's say you're applying it to the digestive system to the stomach area, and you see the skin just get a little bit more extra red when you're applying the essential oil, just grab your carrier and put down another layer of that on top of it, okay? So we always wanna dilute to start though. We're never putting the essential oil directly on the animals in general. We always want to dilute with the carrier oil. Now, my favorite is fractionated coconut oil um, because it's easy to use. It's great for the skin. Some people like to use almond oil as well. So a couple of good carriers, but fractionated coconut oil is just simple for me. So we never want to use water. That's going to drive the essential oil deeper in and cause more irritation. Now, next, I want to talk about always having an escape route. We need to make sure that we're never trapping the animal in, especially those indoor animals when we're diffusing. So the cats and the dogs and whatnot that are inside, make sure that they always have an escape route to go to another room and take a break. Actually, we were just diffusing oils here in the house this morning. And one of my dogs, she, you could tell she just had enough. She's very sensitive to oils in general. Um, you know, so after just a couple of minutes, she wanted to go walk out and go to the front yard. So we need to watch the reaction. Okay. So I didn't, we never trap them in or we're paying attention to the situation and see if she goes to the door. Okay. You know what? She wants to get out and go take a break. So always have an escape route or be able to provide an escape route when they're letting you know that they want to take a break. Now, this might not mean that the, the oil is bothering them or not mixing well with their system. It may also indicate that it's just a bit too much, right? We have to think of an animal, you know, especially let's take a dog, you know, when you have just a heightened sense of smell. Okay, so that aroma may just be a bit too strong for them and they just need to go take a break. So always have an escape route. If you have any of the caged animals, make sure that there's some fresh air flowing in um, and then and the animal is able to you know, take a break as well. So just for you bird owners, just be cautious around that situation when we're diffusing the essential oils. Okay, so continuing on with some guidelines here, we always wanna use caution around pregnant animals, animals that are nursing, um, the young and the elderly and any animals on medication. And that includes your topical flea treatment. So let's say you do um, decide to use the, the flea, you know, the topical flea treatment and the one that goes down the spine. Just want to talk about that for a minute. You need to allow that skin to recover. So we can't apply any essential oils down the spine in, the, in that same region that you applied that flea treatment topically because that skin has been compromised by this strong chemical. And what that can cause is just a bit of sensitivity to the skin in that region. So keep that in mind. But animals that are pregnant and nursing, the young and the elderly, we just need to be a bit more cautious. I always say dilute a bit more, okay? Dilute a bit more with these types. Animals that are pregnant, okay? So these are your pregnant animals. We need to avoid clove, cypress, eucalyptus, ginger, marjoram, peppermint, oregano, and oregano. Animals that are nursing. Now, what I mean by nursing is the animals providing the milk, okay? The moms, so to speak. We can't use peppermint. This may have a tendency to slow down milk production in some animals, okay? So this is the, these oils may bother some animals. It's never across the board and it is never a perfect fit um, to say that every single essential oil is okay for any type of animal. I may give you a list of them here and you might find that a couple of others don't mix well with them either, okay? So we just need to be cautious all the way around. Don't be scared, but just be cautious. Manage the situation and you'll find out which oils your animal likes. So that's why I like to say, use that introduction process, read the body language and everything around it. So this is just a general rule of thumb for pregnancy. It, also animals that are epileptic or prone to seizures. A couple more oils on the list here, basil, camphor, eucalyptus, fennel, rosemary, wintergreen, and clary sage. Now we can always find an oil to cross over, right? That's the beauty of using these essential oils. So let's say you've, you're dealing with an animal with a respiratory condition um, and the first choice you would think of is maybe eucalyptus. Well, instead of you and your animals prone to seizures, well, maybe instead of eucalyptus, we bring out the cardamom, 
Okay, so there's always an alternative for the support of, of different systems of the body. Now, animals with bleeding disorders, again, just a few oils to, um, to avoid. Birch, blue tansy, cassia, cinnamon, clove, fennel, ginger, oregano, and wintergreen. So this list is actually referenced by a veterinarian herself out of the book, Spoil Your Pet, which is a great guide. I'd like everybody to jump on, um, you know, Amazon now and buy this book. It's a phenomenal guide to using essential oils with your pet. It's a book that I've learned from, from, you know, over the years. And it's just a simple tool, very simple tool. So let's get specific about the different species of animals and oils that we should avoid or you try and use a different oil in replacement. So cats topically, okay, this is your topical application for cats. We need to avoid basil, citrus oils, cinnamon, clove, dill, fennel, tea tree, oregano, peppermint, thyme, rosemary, spearmint, and wintergreen. Dogs, topical application. It's going to be birch, tea tree, wintergreen. Now your pocket pets. What I mean by pocket pets here is that means your rabbits, um, your chinchillas, um, you know, what else? Your, your small little, you know, herbivores. And we need to avoid oregano, cinnamon, thyme, clove, and tea tree. Now the, the deal with these little pocket pets is that they have a very delicate digestive system. First of all, being herbivores that has a, a, a lot of fermentation going on so it can break down this plant material efficiently. And some of these oils may just knock off the balance of that fermentation process. So we need to avoid this, otherwise the animal may get a little bit of a digestive upset. So just a simple list to follow. Now birds, we just need to use caution all around. Now, I find it very hard for, especially with the smaller birds to use essential oils just because they're so small and they're so sensitive, like your little parakeets and whatnot. Now, some of your bigger birds, like chickens, I, I've been using the oils with my chickens. I got a new chicken flock over the last few months. So I'm a chicken farmer now. And, um, you know, we are egg raiser, should I say, or, you know, we, we collect the eggs. Anyways, I've been using the essential oils with the chickens. These are bigger birds, right? And I heavily dilute even more. I'll give you all the dilution ratios shortly, but birds in general, there can be a bit sensitive, sensitive with their respiratory system to the essential oils. So please use caution. I prefer to use homeopathic remedies um, with some of the smaller birds in, in replacement of the essential oils. Now your large animals, this is your horses, your pigs, your cattle, your sheep, your goats. Okay, they're very hardy and pretty much we can use all the essential oils with them. Um, just as long as we're diluting properly. And we'll give you that guideline here. So your methods of application. This is how we are going to apply the essential oil with the animals. I want to talk about the big two and then I'll talk about internal in a minute. So first off, your aromatic approach. So when we're using the essential oil aromatically, it needs to be a water diffuser. Okay, it has to be a water diffuser, not one of those ones where you connect the bottle directly to it. it has to be a water diffuser, just a bit more gentle. Okay, in terms of the aroma. Or we can use the palm technique. Now, the palm technique is basically a drop in the palm of your hands, rub your hands together, and allow the animal to breathe in the aroma. You may be on a walk with your German shepherd, and the German shepherd may get anxious around your neighbor's Rottweiler behind the fence, right? So you may not have a diffuser with you all the time. This is when you can break out your essential oil, one drop in the palm of your hand, and just allow that dog to breathe it in nice and deep. Okay, if you're out on a ride with the horse and it's come across a rattlesnake or whatever, and it's a bit spooked, um, same thing. You know, engage the animal with some essential oil and let it just breathe it in to help balance the emotions. Okay, breathing in the essential oil is the best way to help balance the emotions. Even especially these times when there's a heightened um, element of stress around the home because of what's going on, um, you know, around the globe. So our stress also can feed off into our animals, okay? So they can pick up on our stress and start to become stressed themselves, especially those indoor animals. So diffusing essential oils is a great way to keep the entire family balanced out, okay? So when we get, start to get unbalanced with our emotions and our, and our animals as well, it can, we can start to see physical ailments occur. 
It's also a great way to cleanse the air. You know, if you have those indoor animals, the house may, might bring a little bit of a stench, right? Or especially, you know, when you've got a litter box or, you know, just a stinky dog in general. So this is a great way to help cleanse the air. This is what I refer to as the micro dosing approach. So this is small amounts consistently that we can, that the animal can utilize the oil into their system, okay? It's a very gentle approach, but it's a very consistent approach. And then it's also a great way to help support the airways. So that's your, your, um, your aromatic technique. We also have the topical application. Now always dilute again and again and again, dilute, dilute, dilute. Now we can start to manage different skin situations, injured areas. It's a great insect repellent, a great way to support the immune system for those paw animals like the cats and the dogs put it on the paw pads and let the essential oil absorb into the system, kind of like we do with humans when we put it on the bottom of their feet, right? It's going to absorb into the system and be able to work throughout the body. Um, so this is great for immune support as well. So topical application, we're always going to dilute. Now internally in the States, um, we can use the essential oil internally, but it needs to be heavily diluted down. Uh, so I like to mix it in with a bit of raw coconut, let's say one drop um, into your raw, a teaspoon of raw coconut oil, and then mix that into the food. This is going to be with your dogs. Now cats, we can never use the oils internally. Horses and, and all the, the large, um, large animals we can use internally as well. So we just need to be a bit cautious around this, okay? So look for a bit more guidance. Um, and just if you're, if you're brand new to essential oils, just start with the aromatic and the topical approach too, and then build your knowledge um, when, it, when it comes to internal. And then reach out to me if you have any questions about that as well. So here's your dilution ratio. So we're gonna cover the majority of the main species here. So one to four drops of essential oil per 100 drops of a carrier oil for dogs and your large animals, okay? Again, large animals, horses, cows, goats, etc. So you may see in a textbook, 1% dilution or 4% dilution. Let me quickly explain that simple math, just as I did one drop per 100 drops of a carrier oil is considered 1% four drops per 100 drops of a carrier oil is your 4%. Now let's talk about cats and pocket pets, even a heavier amount of dilution here, a half a drop to one drop of essential oil per 100 drops of a carrier. So you may say, how do you get a half a drop? What you're gonna do is just double the amount of carrier oil to one drop of essential oil. Okay, so that's kind of the, the reference there. This is gonna be for your cats and your pocket pets again, Reference in the book, Spoil Your Pet. It's a great little guide. Now for birds, especially large birds, chickens and, and up whatnot, I like to do one drop of essential oil to 200 drops of a carrier. That's basically a half a percent. But even more so, if the animal is a bit ill or it's a bit elderly, I may go up to 400 drops of a carrier. Okay, so that's birds and that's topical application diluted. And the best place for the birds, um, the, some of the bigger birds is on their feet again. Okay, so I had a chicken that was limping around the farm uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we quarantined her um, in a little kennel and then we were applying some heavily diluted fractionated coconut oil and frankincense and apply that to that foot. You know, she finally came right. And now she's getting, uh, getting around real nicely. So very empowering to have these tools um, around the farm or around the home. So age, size, species. Remember, this is all going to vary in dilution. So make sure we're using this chart. The small, young, and elderly, we need to use less essential oil and dilute more. So we're going to go with the half a percent or the one percent. That's your dilution ratio. Now I want to just bring in reflexology real quick, bring in another modality, right? For me, it's I like to bring in multiple, multiple modalities to my wellness plan. So here's just a simple re reflexology chart for dogs. So if I'm trying to manage some type of digestive upset with the dog, then I'm going to find that spot on the paw and I'm going to apply some digestive supporting essential oils to that area. So in this uh, chart, you're going to go to section seven. 
Okay, so I'm gonna apply some digestive supporting oils to section seven, and then I'm also gonna to apply to the stomach directly. But this is just using ref the power of reflexology chart um, within your, your health plan. So now I wanna do is break down the top eight essential oils for your pets. Okay, I'm gonna teach you how to use these. So lavender, we're gonna use lavender to help balance out the emotions of the animal. This is great for animals that get stressed, animals that are a bit anxious, we can turn to lavender. Diffusing is gonna be a great approach, but also diluting and putting it down the spine, diluting it and, and also allowing the animal to just breathe it in in general. The palm technique is a great way to approach this. It's also great for anything skin related. So if you have an animal that's dealing with a bit of a skin condition, then we can apply the lavender diluted down with the carrier to that location to help soothe things and calm things down. Seasonal discomfort. So if the um, animal is a bit sensitive during the springtime, we can diffuse a bit of lavender that's going to help calm things down. It also is great to help manage pain. So it's a great little pain management tool and a very gentle tool as well. So any animal that might be dealing with pain, we can apply the lavender topically to that specific area. But number one is really to help manage that stress, help with those anxious feelings that the animal may be going through. Frankincense is next and frankincense is the absolute must have with your animals. This one is the king of essential oils. This is your powerhouse oil. Uh, it's, it's very gentle again, like the, like the lavender when it comes to applying this oil. And that's why I really love it. It's great to help manage healthy inflammation within the animal. Okay. So if the animal is dealing with, um, you know, a bit of stiffness or maybe it's injured a muscle or whatnot, like I was talking about the chicken limping around, I, I didn't really know what happened to the chicken, but we decided to use frankincense to help with the healthy inflammatory response, but it's also great for skin as well. It's helped support the brain function. It's excellent for cellular health, making sure that the cells stay healthy and vital and going through their proper cycle. But it's also great for calming and balancing emotions. So this is a great time to talk about that aromatic selection approach. If you're dealing with an anxious animal, let's go back to that golden retriever story. We decided to provide frankincense and lavender as the two choices. And actually the dog selected frankincense as, as the oil that they preferred most. So, uh, you know, allowing the animal to select their oil. Frankincense is a great little tool though. Next, I wanna talk about lemongrass. So lemongrass, you probably could have guessed is the one that I used in the early days as that natural flea regiment. So we use lemongrass, the dogs did very well on this, except for that one dog. She didn't like the lemongrass for whatever reason. So we, we chose another oil. I believe at the time it was cedarwood, the next one I'm going to talk about. But lemongrass is great to detour adult fleas. This is how it works. Lemongrass detours adult fleas. They don't like to be in that lemongrass environment. They don't like the smell. They don't like the taste. They are going to be more prone to leave that animal alone because of the scent of lemongrass. But it's also great for joint support. So if you're dealing with an animal that may have uh, some joint discomfort, then this is a great one to apply topically. It's also great for urinary support. So, you know, female animals are more susceptible to urinary challenges. And especially in cats, you see this more heightened. So you, we can use a bit of lemongrass diluted down, of course, on the paws. And then, of course, around the bladder to help support the urinary tract. And it's also good for the immune system as well. So it's a great little power tool that I love for our animals um, and, and another must have in the essential pet kit. Now, next is cedarwood. So lemongrass and cedarwood, they're, they're, you know, they go hand in hand together when we're trying to manage fleas, okay? So for your cats and your dogs and whatnot, um, this is a great little tool to use, especially with dogs. And the reason why I like cedarwood, because it works a little bit different from lemongrass when it detours fleas. It actually dries out the flea eggs and the larva. And we know the main problem with fleas is the eggs and the larva. 95% of the issue is with that process and not actually the adult flea itself. So you have a double whammy here with lemongrass and cedarwood um, to help protect your animal. So it helps naturally repel pests and insects 
but you can also diffuse this one. And this is also a very grounding essential oil as well. It's great for skin. And then it's also good for the respiratory support. So any type of respiratory challenge you may be facing with your animal, allow it to breathe in a bit of cedar wood to help provide that support. Now I'm going to talk about three different blends. The first one is Digest Zen. So this is your digestive support blend. I deal a lot of times with animals with digestive upset. So this one has to go in my pet kit. This is your, you know, your all purpose digestive support tool. Okay, so let's, let's say the animal has is a bit sluggish with it, its digestive system and not passing stool very easily. Apply a little bit of Digest Zen diluted down to the stomach and see if you can get things going. But it also works in just the opposite manner where let's say things are going a bit too fast and, and, and flowing out of the, the animal too quickly. Again, apply some Digest Zen and that's going to help balance things back out. So it's a great one, especially for those um, animals transitioning foods uh, to have in your, your, your practice to be able to manage that situation as well. So anything digestive related, we can turn to our Digest Zen. Now, animals that get stressed, they also seem to get, you know, have a digestive problem as well. So we need to realize what's going on holistically when we're trying to manage the health of our animal. It might need lavender to help manage the stress and then Digest Zen to help manage the digestive upset. So On Guard is our protective blend. This one is another great tool, especially now, you know, in today's day and age when we have in the environmental threat. We've never understood what the environmental threat actually means, you know, until nowadays, right? And how we can use this in terms of animals. A great example of this is my cousin. I don't know if she's on the call. She might be. Uh, anyway, she's got a, a big Bernice mountain dog and she loves to go hiking with her dog. And so she sent me a message, you know, a few months ago and she goes, I want to go hiking, but I'm a bit worried about my dog. You know, there's raccoons and coyotes and everything else. And I don't know what they're leaving behind on the trails and whatnot. And I'm just a bit weary about the situation. So I said, this is what you do. You apply a bit of diluted on guard on the paws before you go on that hike. And then you do the exact same thing once you get off the hike, right? So being more proactive with this application, and this is going to provide the animal natural protection from environmental threats. Great for the immune support, but it's also really good for the respiratory support as well. So if you have an animal that may have some respiratory discomfort going on, then again, the, what are the, what's the other oil we talked about with respiratory? It's cedar wood. So you allow the animal to select cedar wood or on guard as its selection. It's also a great way to clean up around the farm, around the house. You can make your own household cleaner um, and that's going to be more safe for the animals as well because those, those um, toxic you know, cleaners can be very toxic if you're not using a natural one and can be actually harmful for the animal and cause allergies and everything else. So what you want to do is use something natural like a bit of 50-50 white vinegar and water and then a few drops of On Guard and you can clean up pretty much any mess. And then for those puppies, let's say you're, you're, you're toilet training the puppy and it seems to urinate quite often in the home. It's a great way to clean up after the animal. And then we have balance. So balance is your grounding blend. I'm big on help balancing out the emotions of the animal. This is very important. If we're talking about holistic health care, we need to help balance out the emotions of the animal as well. So be, the animal may be stressed because of a physical ailment or the stress may be causing the animal to manifest the physical ailment. So we need to work both hand in hand, okay? So this is where balance comes into play. I always have this as a choice to help manage any type of emotional upset with the animal. So let's say 4th of July, that's coming up, right? We've got fireworks and gunshots and everything else going off. Start using a bit of balance early in the day before that animal gets spooked. Great little tool to have. Now let's talk about Copaiba. Copaiba is one of my new favorite essential oils in terms of using this with pets. You know, the big craze nowadays is CBD oil, right? Everybody ranting and raving CBD oil for this, CBD oil for that, which don't get me wrong, CBD oil um, is very therapeutic, but it also is very controversy and in order to get this pure form of CBD, it's very expensive, right? 
we're on a limited budget with our pet care. I know this specifically, you know, even with my animals, you know, I've got a budget that I need to kind of follow with, um, with my pets. And so this is where Copaiba comes in. When in the United States, you can get 100% pure Copaiba by doTERRA for what, $35? versus the 135 you're going to pay for CBD. Now, how this compares to CBD, this is also a cannabinoid, right? So it has BCP, which is another cannabinoid um, that pretty much is exactly the same in its therapeutic value as CBD, except for it's more responsive and reactive to the body. The body utilizes the BCP better than it does CBD. And now we're talking about 100% pure that's less controversial as well down the road. So what's this going to provide? This is going to provide antioxidant support. It's going to provide cardiovascular support, you know, making sure that the, the heart stays healthy. Like I had with my, my girl, Moral, and we lost her. I wish I had some Copaiba back then just to give her a little bit more support. I don't know. She was pretty much, you know, on her last leg back then. But who knows? If I was more proactive in the early days, things might have been different. Also great for any nerve discomfort in the animal. Great for muscles and joints as well. So again, what was the other one? Lemongrass. So you can allow the, the dog to select copaiba or lemongrass. So you can allow the horse to select copaiba and lemongrass as what they would prefer for their joint discomfort. Sad story. Uh, my lab pup was running on the beach the other day. And actually, it was about a month ago. And come to find out, she's blown she's torn both of her knee uh, ligaments, slightly torn, both of them. We took her to the vet because she just was hobbling around. We're like, okay, got to get her sorted out. Let's get an x-ray. Vet comes back and says, she's done both of them. $4,000 per operation. So anyways, we've got copaiba and we've got lemongrass and we've got frankincense going topically on her knees to give her some extra support. Also great for the skin care of the animal. So here's my daily flea protection for you cat and dog owners. What you do is you need to apply this daily for it to be effective. So we need to dilute it a bit more since it is a daily application. So the best method here is get a 100 mil glass spritzer. That's a four ounce glass spritzer, 18 drops of lemongrass to 90 mil, um, yeah, 90 mils of fractionated coconut oil. And that's going to give you your 1% dilution for your dogs. Now for cats, we want to do a half a percent. So we're going to do nine drops of lemongrass to 90 mils of fractionated coconut oil, okay? And just use cautious, caution around the situation with cats, okay? They can be just a bit more sensitive to the essential oils. So if it starts to avoid you, then just leave that one alone. Um, maybe try another oil, maybe, um, you know, use the Terra Shield blend as well as another good one. Now, Cat, or sorry, for the dogs, I love to add in cedar woods. So you're doing nine drops of lemongrass and nine drops of cedar wood. I've already talked about the benefits and how those work um, together into a 90 mil fractionated coconut oil for your dog. Now, I don't like to use cedar wood as often topically with the cats for a flea control because it's a daily application. Cats groom themselves constantly and cedar wood doesn't mass, uh, meet the grass standard in the United States. So we need to avoid that one for any type of consumption, so to speak. Now I want to talk about my top two essential pet collection kits here. These kits are an absolute great way to get started if you want to start adopting these natural tools around the home. Now, this is my essential pet collection kit. This one includes your wholesale membership. So you're going to get access to wholesale pricing for 12 months, that's going to be 25% discount. You're also going to have access to a loyalty rewards program where you can earn free products, kind of like your frequent flyer program. Everybody loves those and be able to cash in and earn free products. And the oils that you're going to get with this collection is Copaiba, Lavender, Lemongrass, Digest, and On Guard, all in the 15 ml. So the 15 ml is going to provide roughly 300 drops per bottle. And if we're talking just one drop mixed in with some fractionated coconut oil, this kit's going to last you quite a bit of time. Now, this goes for 170 USD, including the wholesale membership. Now, here's my favorite kit. This is the ultimate pet collection kit. This includes everything that we've talked about today, 
my top eight oils, and this includes the wholesale membership as well. This one goes for 272. I also call this your favorite pet kit because you're only gonna buy this one for your favorite pet, right? <laughs> Nah, this is, a, this is a great collection for anybody trying to get started um, with some natural health care. These tools are going to last quite a bit of time as well. Okay, so this is your ultimate pet collection kit. So I would just recommend for you to get back with the person that invited you to this webinar, check in with them and see if they can help you get started with your own collection. Now, for those of you who do already have a membership, um, what I would recommend actually is for you to start your own separate collection for your animals. Okay, so get your empty rollers, get some more fractionated coconut oil, buy some of the oils that you need for your pet, and then start pre-diluting, getting things ready, label them properly as well. This is for everybody. Label the, um, the roller bottles properly. Now, roller bottles, for those of you who are new, are a little glass bottle that has a little roller top. It's easy to apply and pre-dilute the essential oil. So we want to label everything, put the dilution ratio on there, put your pet's name on there. Because if you have multiple pets, sometimes it's going to be different dilutions depending on the animal. So that's it for me. I just want to thank Jen once again for allowing me to come on and just share my passion. For those of you who want to follow me on social media, here's my Facebook and Instagram. And then go check out my website, GarciaAnimalHealth.com. Um, we got blogs on there. And if you need a book in a consultation so we can address the specific need for your animal, feel free. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I'll turn it back over to Jen. Thank you, Andy. That was awesome. We've had a lot of people say that they really are enjoying this. So thank you. Thank you. I want to open it up to people and see if there's any questions. Um, yeah, you got it, Pat. We're happy to be here. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, we'll open it up and see if anybody does have any questions. I like how um, simple you made it and then also how you you really hit the big questions I always get um, of like, okay, is tea tree okay around the animals? Is it okay with the cats? How do you use it around birds? Like those are the big ones that I always get. So you just like knocked it out of the park, made it super easy. <laughs> now I can yeah. just end this webinar. Exactly. So the key with like tea tree is one of those controversial oils, right? Totally. So I, I just tell my people, just, just, let's just avoid it, you know, and let's find another one that does the exact same thing. There you go. So Melissa's question is the book, is it by Jan C. Jeremias Mia K. Frazo? Yes, exactly. Oh, so that's uh, Mia, Mia Frizo and yeah. Jan Jeremias. So Jan oh, Jeremias is the scientist. She does all the study on the blood work for safety protocol with the essential oils. And then Mia, Mia is the veterinarian that practices with these oils as well. Rad. Awesome. That's definitely the book then, Melissa. Very cool. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? We'll give it just like one more minute and then we'll let you guys out of here. Um, if we do have more questions that pop up, I'll let you know. Oh, my stepmom wants to know how should Copaiba be applied for? Okay, so Scout, her her golden has um, bad breath, some teeth issues, and uh, it was recommended to use Copaiba in diluted on his jawline, like in his on his gums to help with that. Is how would you recommend using that? What else would you recommend for that? Yeah, so you can use the Copaiba. Get some raw coconut oil and then melt it down, kind of like the babies, you know. So we take the raw coconut oil, melt it down, add the copaiba, let it cool just slightly so it's not too hot and then apply that around the gums. Okay, Colleen, let me know if that clarified that for you. You can type in the chat and let me know. Um, Deirdre's question is, I have a, I'm not gonna be able to say this, C-A-I-Q-U-E parrot um, and live in a two bedroom condo about a thousand square feet. My bird cage is in the dining area. Do you think it's safe to diffuse in our office or bedroom if they're not in the bedroom? Yeah, if it's in another room, then that's, that, that should be safe, you know, but still you want to read the reaction of the animal. If it seems a bit agitated when you're diffusing, um, then possibly is a bit irritated with that oil specifically. So it's good to take a little journal and go, okay, lavender, she doesn't like lavender, or maybe it's, you know, balance, maybe she doesn't like balance, um, but she's okay with on guard, you know, so just keep a journal, watch the mannerisms of, of the bird, um, and then go from there. Perfect, Deirdre. Hopefully that answered your question. Let us know if that is helpful. And she said it's pronounced like C-I-E-E-K. <laughs> 
don't know. Not, I'm not a, I don't have pets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enough to take care of. Okay. Melissa says also, I may have missed when my dog was distracting me. What about licking their paws? Is it okay if they like lick their paws after they put the, is that what you want? Like if they put the oils on Melissa, is it okay for them to lick them? And then specifically her other question was skin issues. Like, is there anything you recommend specifically if they have like um, some skin issues? Yeah, so licking the paws after the essential oil is applied, they tend not to do that. They tend okay. to leave them alone. But if they do, just be aware if the um, if it's a if the supplemental facts are on the bottle. So if it's like cedar wood, you don't want the dog licking a whole bunch of cedar wood constantly. But if it's lemongrass, it's a little bit different story. So uh, just pay attention to that. If the bottle has the supplemental facts, then that should be okay. But just kind of keep an eye. And then for skin, I like to go either copaiba. Um, lavender or frankincense. So allow your dog to make the selection. You know, you can, uh, you can introduce all three of them. Okay. And then and apply them topically. With, with the coconut oil? Yep. Apply topically, dilute it down to that location itself. Now you also want, you know, just, you know, a bit further with that, you want to look at the digestive system of the animal. Um, most likely it's coming from the inside out. So, you know, getting, maybe, maybe switching up the diet, um, jumping on a probiotic as well. I like to use goat's milk, raw goat's milk, but you can also use the PB assist by doTERRA as well. Um, you know, that might be a, um, you know, not the junior, never the junior, but the PB assist. They can take the pill. Okay. Yeah. Um, Melissa wants to know more about getting him to stop licking his paws because he licks them so much that he makes them have sores on them. Okay. Yeah. So that's an indication of stress as well. So animals will lick their paws when they're stressed out. Um, so something else might be going on and see if you can de-stress the animal, see, see if you can figure out when they're licking their paws most. So again, take a journal. You know, I always recommend my clients to have a journal and just document everything when we're dealing with health. Um, time of day when this seems to be more prominent than others. Um, is it, are they licking their paws less after a walk? Is it, um, are they licking their paws more after a walk? Um, it'll check the paw. Is there something going on in the paw? Is there a sticker, you know, or a, um, a splinter or something like that? Um, yeah, so there's, there's quite a few things going on there. And, and, and a lot of times itchy paws means that, again, digestive problems. So maybe you're really looking at the food and things like that. And that's where you really can come in and help if someone's been like, I've tried a lot of things, but nothing's really working. And you can kind of look at that full picture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then, you know, take that whole holistic picture. We'll spend about, you know, 45 minutes or so diving in to get the, the depth in depth picture of what's going on here. Perfect. Very helpful. That's awesome. Um, so PB assist, you mentioned that's something that they can just take, put in his food and then have him take it. Yeah. Put it in a pill or put it like in, um, you pill have pop. to keep it in the pill form. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pill pop type deal. I like to put mine in like a banana. I stuff it in a banana and then the dogs pretty much just swallow the banana whole. Um, mm. so that's an easy way to, you know, have them take a, a capsule as well, okay. but you want to have it that capsule in a capsule, right. With the PB assist. So it gets down into the gut. Yep. Absolutely. Melissa said, um, that he's a schnauzer too. So she knows that a lot of times they do have skin sensitivities. So that might be like, part of it, but she's going to try the probiotic. Yep. There you go. Awesome. Okay. I don't see any other questions coming through. So hopefully Andy answered your questions. Um, I will make sure to get any other questions back to him, but guys, he's awesome. He knows so much about the oils. Him and his wife have been using the oils, um, for God, I think like eight years now. And then you've been really diving into the animals for the last couple of years, even more specifically. So thank you for sharing your knowledge and your passion with us. Um, it's always a pleasure to get to connect with you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jen. See you, everybody. Okay. Bye, guys, on Facebook.